How's it going, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode here on the Commonwealth Realm. I am Joey Ferris, and I am joined by Conrad Varnes and Leo, last name redacted, and we are going to talk about some n- the most important Nintendo Switch games coming out for the rest of the year, and we got a stacked list, and we are also, we got a little bit of a sponsor thrown in there, so before we continue, we have one question to ask you. Do you plan on raiding Area 51? Of course not. Instead, you should check out Raid Shadow Legends on mobile, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. If you've never heard of Raid Shadow Legends before, it's a collection mobile RPG that's taking the world by storm, with almost 10 million players who downloaded the game within the first three months of release. I mean, with review scores like these, it's no wonder the game is so popular. What I love about this game is that it throws you right into the action and it's really easy to learn the mechanics. It's honestly a game for everyone, and the best part is that it's free to play. You can enjoy PvP battles in the arena, PvE in dungeons, and cool, huge boss fights. And I mean huge. So when this video is over, be sure to head down to the link in the description below to get yourself free 50,000 silver and a free Epic Champion as a part of the new player program. Special thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Now then, let's talk more about some Nintendo Switch games. Starting with, on July 26th, Fire Emblem Three Houses. This game is a big deal because it's the first Fire Emblem game on a home console since I believe it was Radiant Dawn on the Wii in 2007. So not only will this be a game on a home console, but on a handheld as well. Best of both worlds. And it's a faction based one, right? Yeah, it's a new take on the game and it's a very long game. One path takes approximately 80 hours to complete and you have a total of three paths so that easily accumulates to well over 200 hours of gameplay and that's well it's very good value but who has time to play a game like this when you have so many other great games coming to the switch in both july august september oh my god september is crazy Mm -hmm. this year it is it really is but uh you know teenagers who don't have any responsibilities will have a good time playing all of fire emblem three houses i'm so jealous of you guys cherish that free time because oh my god boy (laughs) it gets worse but that's not the only game coming out on july 26th we're also getting wolfenstein youngblood from Bethesda Game Studios. This is kind of a sequel, kind of an expansion to uh, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, which also came out on Switch. And this one's coming out the same day as the other platforms. And I hope, personally, for me, Wolfenstein 2 was kind of a little bit of a disappointment compared to The New Order. So I hope uh, Youngblood kind of balances that out. Have any of you guys played the other Wolfenstein games? Um. I, yes. I haven't myself, but um, I d- is it going to be censored on uh, the Switch? Because I understand they censor a lot of like uh, games with uh, Nazi themes in them, right? It's only in Germany. It's only in Germany. Oh, only in Germany. Yeah, I think it's only censored by region. Mm-hmm. That is correct. There's a lot of 80s references in here, other than just Nazis. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's going to be exciting. And then on, we're jumping all the way to August 30th here. My, man, is there really anything coming out in August other than Astral Chain from Platinum Games? That is exciting. This game looks really good. Um, well, there are a few <laughs> other games, but uh, we'll mention them in the video next week, so stay tuned, guys. But uh, Astral Chain mm-hmm. is probably one of the most promising games uh, this year. Oh, oh, by far. It's it's a co- collab of uh, Platinum Cross uh, Nier Automata, and that's just... It, it looks insane. And I was talking to a coworker about this. He says, I don't know how to feel about this game. I'm kind of concerned about it. And then I told him the director of the game is the lead game designer for Nier Automata. And he was like, nope, I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, just that fact in general just makes this a very exciting sort of deal. And, of course, Platinum Games, whenever they do... Whenever they do action games that aren't licensed, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Legend of Korra, they actually do a really good job. So that's really exciting. It's going to be the big August game for the Switch, without a doubt. Absolutely, and I, I've heard a sa- some of the soundtrack of it, and it's just incredible. Incredible. The, just listening to the music while playing the game will be such a joy. Absolutely. But that's not the only game actually coming out in August. There's also another game that some of you might not have heard of. It was covered in the uh, Nindy highlights, um, Pine, which I actually got to play two years ago at an event called Day of the Devs. Pine is essentially a open world sort of, it's an independent game for one, but uh, you don't see many independent games tackle 3D environments in the way that Pine is doing it. 
And in a sense, it's a lot like Breath of the Wild. There's crafting, there's monsters to fight, there's an open world to explore. So if you if you can't possibly wait for Breath of the Wild 2, I'd highly recommend checking this out when it comes out in August. Indeed. And that's August for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's August. A little bit of a light. Two games in August. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's not all coming out for the rest of the year. September is going to make up for all the games that didn't come out in August because, oh boy, we got a list coming. Uh, starting with, of course, Spyro the Reignited Trilogy coming out on September 3rd. Nobody was surprised when this game was announced for Switch. Like... It's a, it's about time this comes out for the Switch. <laughs> yeah, Spyro's got a really special place in a lot of people's hearts, myself included, because we just instantly go back to like when we first played and with the old blocky graphics and seeing it like all redone for the you know the modern age is really it's, it's yeah, special. It, you know? it, it finally looks like you thought it looked in your head. So that's the cool that's the cool about these uh, these like PlayStation One era remakes, but I, I understand why they decided to announce it first at E3 because they wanted to keep it as late as possible in regards to Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, which is also out on the Nintendo Switch right now. It still looks good on the Switch, and uh, I played it on PS4 Pro, and I might play it again on the Switch. Who knows? But uh, after that, on September 6 is NBA 2K20, and after that. <laughs> on September 13th. <laughs> no, we have to talk about it a little bit. It's a, it's a basketball game. and uh, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. The, yeah, what's interesting, though, is... It's the Play-Doh Link. Yeah, it's the Play-Doh Link, you know? Um, it's the Coraline <laughs> Link. <laughs> but, yeah, Link's Awakening looks really good. I have not played the original game on the Game Boy because I am a heathen. So this is going to be exciting for me uh, to play I. through. Neither have I. Well, I have played both the Game Boy version and the demo at E3, and I can say you have a lot to look forward to. This game is going to be very, very good. It's it's pretty much... Uh, like, people would think, oh, it's too small for a $60 game, but they're adding this Dungeon Arranger, and they are also uh, bringing the um, Color Dungeons back from uh, from uh, Link's Awakening DX. So uh, there should be enough of content here to, to fill up. Enough to... For Breath the, until Breath of the Wild 2, maybe, uh, we'll not see. so sure, but uh, luckily there are other big open world games coming to and the, the Switch, art which style, we'll get to. And the art style is okay with everyone now, because I heard there was a bit of division there. Oh yeah, it looks beautiful. When I saw the dioramas at E3, I was instantly <laughs> convinced that, yeah, this game has the right art style. And it's also the fact that the, the setting the game takes place in. I'm not going to go into spoilers. Fair mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. The same day coming out is a game that I missed out on the last generation. I think a lot of people missed out on the last generation was Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. And uh, what I know so far about this game is, of course, it's a Japanese RPG, but the animation was created by Studio Ghibli. So, or Ghibli, how do you pronounce it, guys? I don't know. But uh, it's, Ghibli. it just looks, yeah, Ghibli. Uh, it looks, it's pronounced differently in Japan, Ghibli, but. It looks beautiful, amazing. I've been told I need to play this, so I might just do that after I get Link's Awakening since they're coming out the same day. Hopefully we'll get the sequel to the Switch. I think we'll get the sequel to the Switch totally, at some point, maybe. But uh, yes, and after that is on September 24th is Contra Rogue Core, which is the ugliest Switch game I've ever seen. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding, but <laughs> I've seen WWE. It's not the ugliest Switch game I've ever seen, but it does look interesting. It's definitely a different take on Contra. It's not 2D. It's it's somewhat top down. You get to play as a giant panda. It's Konami, so ooh, ooh, we'll see about that. Konami's but, um, got an okay yeah. record with Contra, in my haven't they? Yeah, they do, as as but it's, Konami's yeah. a different company now than they were, because... Oh, yeah, true. Uh, that, that thing... Well, happened. they have launched pretty much the... First, they launched the Contra Collection, and then they're launching the new game, Contra Rogue Corp. Yes. Which, unfortunately... The main problem I have with that game is the game engine, mm-hmm. no doubt. No Because doubt. Contra is all about just shoot them up, blast them up... It's a, it's a shooter. It's a run run and uh, it's like a beat em up. Only you just it's a shooter, and that's 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 pretty much what Contra. They didn't mess up Devil May Cry Five, and that's a big thing for me. So uh, I'll give them a chance. That was Capcom. Oh, okay. I'm a fake fan. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> I'm a fake fan. Oh my god, why did they say that? Yo, they like they we, s- we, we're talking about the companies whose last game was Metal Gear Survive. So <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not getting my hopes up. Yeah, exactly. I, I'd rather be oh, so positively surprised. Well, well I see. mean, Bomberman was okay. 
So there's that. So we'll see how this yeah. turns out. But uh, I, I was joking when I said Contra Rogue Core is the ugliest Switch game I've ever seen, because uh, the next game on this list is Dead by Daylight, coming out the same day as uh, Rogue Core. And when I heard about this game coming to Switch, I was like, oh, that, that's an interesting choice. I wonder how many people are going to play it. Just to clarify, is this the game where you put people on meat hooks? Yes. Oh, I, I know that game. Yeah, I kind of. It's know. the one where you, <laughs> yeah. where you play as like Jason Voorhees and stuff, or Jason Voorhees ripoffs or something. They can't necessarily use the actual like yeah, yeah. monsters or the intellectual yeah. properties and all that. Exactly, but they can use parodies of them, you know. And yeah. then on September twenty seventh, we got Dragon Quest eleven. Uh, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition S something title. Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition and this was the first ever game announced for the Nintendo Switch when it was called the NX and now we're finally getting it and it looks it's so good! How are they going to fit the title on the game box? They're going to say including Dante from Devil May Cry in 3D with <laughs> Game Rumble Pack. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, uh, I, I've seen the box art. It, it, it looks, uh, it's, it looks fine. It's not, it's not a problem at all. Okay. And uh, I think that they just saved this until September, just because of uh, Hero coming out for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate sometime, either during Evo uh, or, uh, or something like in that. a direct yeah. somewhere. Yeah, like yeah. That. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating stuff. And, uh, and I, even though I haven't really played a Dragon Quest game, I am playing Dragon Quest Builders 2, though, so you should definitely play that if you haven't already. And and maybe I'll pick up 11S, because this looks like a Switch port done with love. Like, they're adding so much new... What is it, well, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm really curious. What does the S stand for? Uh, Switch, I guess? Switch. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, think I kind of guessed that, but I, I don't know. It's very tongue in cheek, see, but um, but I love the, what they're doing with the Switch port. It, it's I think I heard it was re the engine was basically revamped for the Switch itself, so it's not like oh that's good. It looks a little bit low res, but when you're running around through that open world fighting all those villains, it it looks fantastic. But yeah, there's so much they're adding, like it's crazy. Yeah. But on the same day, FIFA uh, 2020 kick ball kicking simulator. Yes. Football. <laughs> that sounded a bit weird Football. when I said it like that, but uh, I'm actually not into football, despite being English, um, so I've given up my British you card. You bloody my... traitor. <laughs> I'm a traitor, <laughs> but I'm really not into uh, football, but let's just sit, let's be honest here. It's another kick ball into goal game. It's mm -hmm. much like NBA. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. you know, I'm American. I'm also not that much into football or soccer. You're a traitor, but, too. You know? <laughs> yeah. But at uh, least bring Madden on the Switch. Just bring Madden. Give us real John football Madden. on the Switch. God. <laughs> John Madden's on my waifu. Now then, in October, we also have Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. And the biggest question we need to ask when it comes to this game is, why Banana Blitz? It's known as probably the bad Super Monkey Ball game. Why not remaster in HD Super Monkey Ball 1 or 2? Two great GameCube classics. Well, it's a beginning. At least Sega is recognizing that they have uh, other past games to remaster or make sequels to than just Sonic and uh, hopefully we'll see some more Sub Super Monkey Ball forward and maybe they even have updated improved Banana Blitz. We all know one of the problems with Banana Blitz was the motion control aspect but then again the Switch has motion control as well with HD rumbles, so we'll see you in October 29th. Now let's move on to the game that uh, has actually been, been rumored to finally have a release date, and that is beginning of uh, October, actually. Luigi's Mansion 3. Shocker. And Coming out in October, right? Yeah, people, are, people are saying October. I think it's October <laughs> You know what? 3rd. I'm not gonna, don't, yeah. I wouldn't give it a release date until it's confirmed. Yeah, it's October 4th. It's October 4th. Watch, it's so. coming out in December. <laughs> they would. Yeah. Well, they, they, they just want a few weeks to build up to Halloween, and yeah. then... Uh, get the sales they want from this game by that time. Mm -hmm. Of yeah. course, yeah. Now I gotta catch up on my Luigi's Mansion games before I play this. Like, we're getting Gooigi, guys. This is a big Gooigi. deal. Yes, gotta love Gooigi. But it looks very good. The, the game engine looks sweet and beautiful, and yeah, I'm excited. It plays beautifully as well. Yeah, and oh my god. Did you play it at E3? Yeah, I did. I actually got 20 minutes with it, and the uh, demo with that night boss was actually... Very intuitive. Like, I love the variety the game uh, offers this time around. The fact that it's a haunted hotel instead of just a haunted mansion. And then um, you you will have all these different scenarios that I think will really add to it. And the booth at E3 was spectacular. So, yeah, I uh, look forward to Luigi's Mansion 3. It's probably the, so far, under most underrated Nintendo game coming out this year. 
So what you're saying is this is Hotel Mario 2 featuring Luigi from the Devil May Cry <laughs> series. <laughs> yeah. Well, to some extent. Yeah, when's the CDI yeah, 2 coming out? That's excellent. Yeah. But boys, we're getting The Witcher oh, 3 boy. on the Switch. Oh! What? How is that? How, I how don't did know. this happen? They're going to have to I cut have, corners. They're going to have to. I have to. three words. I have three words to sum how it's possible. CD Projekt Red. They're going to down, downscale all of it. They're going to have to cut corners like so majorly on this. Um, I'm not well, going to get my course. hopes up but for still, this. Still, it's, it's, it's Witcher on the go. Come on. Witcher 3. I know, but I'd rather. If, if, if it's Witcher on the go and it's like a You will be able to play The Witcher 3 on Nintendo Switch Lite when it comes out. That's crazy. How crazy isn't that? That's nuts. Okay, that is, that is when, you, when you say it like that, yeah. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Good argument. And the, the content that is in that game and fitting that in on the Switch is just like... When you think about Breath of the Wild and you think all things that were missing there, like uh, in terms of storytelling, and even to some extent I would say bosses, <clears throat> that's exactly what The Witcher 3 offers through its main game and DLCs expansions. Like, the expansions in The Witcher were like full games. Unlike mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild, which just added more shrines. So, in, definitely 30 FPS. In then. The Witcher, you get a full new area as an expansion. Yeah, like, it's fantastic. Blood and Wine was fantastic. Yeah, that, mm. that DLC. I still need to finish Blood and Wine, but my god. The Witcher 3 is... It's probably in my top three games of all time. It's so good. And it's coming to the Absolutely. Switch. Insane. It's it's up there as well. It's It's... Probably one of the best games of this generation, and I think that if you don't buy this game on the Nintendo Switch, especially when they have put all this effort to fit the entire game, no downloads on a 32 gigabyte cartridge, that is criminal. Well, because fitting all that content for that price on one cartridge on the Nintendo Switch, with possibility to play on the go or on the TV, this is something you just have to get. So, yes. if Joe, if you, Joe, if you had to choose a Skyrim or Witcher, 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 that's Easy. no question. Easy. All right, like, fair enough, dude, fair enough. dude, Skyrim is so good, right? But The Witcher Three just takes everything Skyrim does and does it better. <laughs> oh enough, my goodness, enough. I could hype, I could hype it so much, but I'm gonna do a shameless plug. Check out my review on Ferris Wheel Pro. Click, click that card. <laughs> anyway, next game. Uh, oh, hey, The Witcher Three got nothing on Untitled Goose Game. Yeah. All I'm saying. It's, uh, Right now. Game of the year. <laughs> End the competition. It's over. It's it's the winner. Yeah, the exactly. Year. Yeah, it's interesting to see how much love this game has gotten. Because it's like you play as a goose, and they're they're literally just calling it Untitled Goose Game. You know, it's a really it's it's a really brave step because they could have gone for any sort of like aquatic bird, like a duck or uh, you know uh, or a crane. I really think using a goose is a really brave step to, uh, for the gaming industry's development. Yes, exactly. Like, you would think yeah. a mallard would probably do better, yeah. but no. Stick with the yeah. goose, man. We need, oh, we need a release date. Well, maybe, the maybe only thing the we need about this game is a release, is a release date. date. Yeah, and I think they said fall 2019? I don't know. And this, we'll see. Yeah, maybe. Untitled but the same goes with Shovel Knight, King of Cards. How many times has this game, or I mean expansion, been delayed? Like, I've seen this game so many times. Over and mm -hmm. over Hatching again. Hatching in the fall, I guess, and yeah. Indie game development is hard, man. That's all I'll say. <laughs> it's so hard. But, you yeah. know, they, these indie developers deserve all the time they need, because crunch in the video game industry is a problem, so just don't mm -hmm. don't crunch, man. Take all mm -hmm. the time you need, you know? Mm -hmm. Then we have also Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, which is uh, a very good game. It's a remaster of uh, Final Fantasy Classic, mm -hmm. and it's coming out sometime in fall 2019. But now, Excellent. to the big... Big oh, game boy. for any oh, <laughs> sports fans or Mario and Sonic fans. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. And I have to say, because I also played the demo of that, and yes, it's a mini game collection. But the mini mm -hmm. games like surfing, like skateboarding, skateboarding felt like Tony Hawk, and I mean old school Tony Hawk. Ooh. And that's why you should be. Ex that's why you should be excited for it because you also can. That's hype. It's hype, and there. I think also they are teasing that you might play some of the events in 16-bit mode as a recalling back to the 1964 Ooh. Tokyo Olympics. Ooh, 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 ooh that's... Ooh, okay, you just got me more hyped for this game, all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, uh, is, you should be excited. Is it, one of those this... games, is it one of those games you'll play once, then kind of 
not play again, or do you think there's replay value here? It's mostly a, a game which you play with four other people when they are over oh, okay, or play. Okay. Like Mario play Party. Online. Yeah, a party game. Yeah, it's a party game. Like it's it's oh, a party game, enough. and it has yeah. a nice collection of mini games. Anyway, uh, we also have other games in November, including uh, a game that is quite controversial these days. Pokemon Sword and Shield, because you know more people <laughs> prefer swords than shields. It's it's a controversy, you know. I'm a, I'm a super big Pokemon fan, and like to the point I actually cosplay it and. Uh, you know, Conrad has the pictures if he wants to show it. But, uh, you know, the, the, honestly, imagine you're on a ship and you're going as fast as possible and then the wind goes out your sails and you're kind of this drifting. And I think that's kind of where the game is now because the national decks thing, I'm not going to go on too much, but it, it really did take the hype out of a lot of it for some people, including me. It, you know, I don't want to get into it too much, but it, it's hype, but... It's not as hype, you know? <laughs> I, I think the biggest disappointment is connected to the fact that franchises like Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem are able to do this big graphical and gameplay update, while Pokemon oh, yeah. is just staying the same. It, it feels like a handheld game, even though it's on the Nintendo Switch. It's, re it's really funny you said that. that. That's the biggest concern, I think, about it's the funny. game. It, it is funny you said that, because today I was watching a video where um, they did actually take old 3DS models, upscale them, and they looked beautiful. And that, literally, they don't, they don't have to remodel anything, just upscale it slightly. That's it. So, but anyways, uh, <laughs> next game. Oh boy, Joey, I'm going to take yours. over this. Y'all shut up, because I'm going to go, I'm about to lay some <laughs> down right now. Guitar. Doom Eternal is going to be Game of the Year 2019. At least for me, personally. You can, you're fine to disagree with me, but dude, Doom 2016 was just godsend mind-blowing. The, the king of FPSs for this generation. Doom Eternal is going to blow all that out of the water. It's going to be insane. Insanity. No matter what platform you play it on, I'm getting it on both PC and the Switch, and maybe even Xbox One X. I'll spend $200 on this Jesus. game. I don't care, but id Software has earned my respect, because Doom Eternal... You just want to kill Hayden. Yeah, I just want to kill Hades. <laughs> <All that. laughs> oh my gosh, it's... Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Doom Eternal is going to be f fantastic. Watch, it's going to suck now that I said that. No, I'm just kidding. But I have all the faith in id Software. I am really excited for this game. It is my most anticipated of the year, so it's going to be fun. But uh, next game is Panzer Dragoon, Jeez. which is interesting. Panzer Dragoon. Yeah, I didn't expect to see Panzer Dragoon, like, anywhere. <laughs> okay, I know nothing about this game, so you guys go Well, ahead. Panzer Dragoon, from my understanding, as a guy on the outside looking in, was one of the best games ever released on the Sega Saturn. And they've had multiple entries since then, but um, from what I've seen from the Nintendo Switch trailer, Panzer Dragoon looks like, um, looks kind of like a Star Fox game in that sense. I mean, they're similar. You fly around, you shoot things on a, on a Dragoon, and, uh, yeah, Panzer Dragoon fans, please forgive me for not knowing too much. But those are just the Nintendo Switch games coming out in 2019. Stay tuned for next week when we talk about the games coming out in 2020 and beyond. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you are new, subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when we come out with more Nintendo Switch videos. We'd also like to thank our patrons, including Royal Producers Kenyatta Ali and Bradley Carriage, for all their contributions to the realm. Visit patreon.com slash commonrealm to find out how you can join the ranks in exchange for some awesome perks. That's all for now, girls and guys, so we will see you next time on the Commonwealth Realm.